Howdy YouTube parts. Jack Spade back here with you High Noon Leatherworks for another leather adventure. And today is part two and the conclusion of the leather vest project. So if you go back, if you haven't seen it, the last video is doing the pattern and the pieces for this project. And today we're going to go ahead, I'm going to show you how I'm going to stitch this up and then put some conchos on using some blood knots. So come on in and let's get started. How I'm going to start this today is I'm going to take my pieces, I'm going to separate them here. I've got my right and left front, I've got my back, and what I'm going to do is, that's a pretty long stretch there to stitch, and when you're putting this leather back to back like that to stitch it, and this is slick. I found out by trial and error uh, that this wants to slide on you as it's going through uh, the presser foot tries to pull this through the stitching or sewing machine and it wants to slide around on you. It wants to stretch. So I'm going to try something different today that I haven't tried yet. Um, and let's turn this around and I'm going to put these pieces back to back here make sure they're correct that one's goes on that side this one goes on this side so obviously I'm doing it inside out um, so I can get my stitching on there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this aside for a second and I am going to use some contact cement and like I said I haven't tried this yet and I'm hoping it doesn't mess up my uh, the needle and the bobbin on the stitching machine the sewing machine and all I'm going to do is I'm going to put I put a piece of cardboard under it so I can go out toward the edge. And I'm going to make sure, if you look at the last video, I allowed a quarter inch of a seam here. So that's all I'm doing is approximately a quarter inch out to the edge. And I'm covering, that's why I'm using the cardboard, so I can cover the whole piece all the way out to the edge. Now, what I'll do is I think I'll go ahead and just do one seam at a time and let's see how that works out because I don't want to get too much rubber cement or contact cement on each piece. So let's just try one piece at a time. I'll flip this over I'll do the same here on the front piece. And again, I'm just going approximately a quarter of an inch out to the edge. Any excess that's left when I turn my vest inside out my seams done, I can uh, go ahead and just rub that off with my finger. It'll come right off of there. So I'll let those two set up just for a second before I put those together. So while I'm waiting on that, I'll go ahead and get my sewing machine set up. All right, so I've let my uh, contact cement set up a little bit and set my sewing machine up and I'm going to go ahead and place those 
on top of one another and press those down make sure they have good contact because the whole idea is I don't want that sliding while I'm trying to sew that so I'll put that in there I'll use uh, a guide here normally what I like to do is get it set up where I want my stitch to be and I'll just put a piece of painters tape on there that seems to work out great for me I'm sure that's not how a seamstress would do it but I'm not a seamstress I'm just a novice here So I'll put me a piece of blue painter's tape on there and that'll give me a guide that I can follow as I'm putting my stitching in. Now I'll drop my presser foot, go ahead and go about four stitches, back it up, lock that stitch in, and then come forward again. Now, you'll notice I'm grabbing the back of that and I'm not pulling it through. I'm letting the presser foot pull, letting the machine pull the material through, but I am guiding it with my front finger here and then back here where I've got a hold of it. So I'm not pulling on it, but I'm making sure that it stays nice and straight. I get to the end go backwards, lock that stitch in, go forward. scissors here cut that at the front and the back and let's see how that seam turned out it turned out really good so again, I can take that contact cement, any that's left over when I pull this over the other way, and just roll it off with my finger. So I can take that right off of there. And I have a nice, clean, straight seam. So the next thing I want to do is go ahead and now that I know that's going to work fine, I'll go ahead and I'll do the same down the side here on this piece I'll let that set up a couple minutes do the same thing press it down then I'll come back and I'll stitch that one I've got my contact cement on both sides of the leather that goes up the side underneath the arm and I'm right in the way. So I'll put those two pieces together like I did the piece on the shoulder. And push those together. And then be ready to stitch those together again I've got my painters tape little guide on here so I know where I want to stitch drop my pressers foot Go 
about four or five stitches, hit reverse, back it up and lock that stitch in, then I can go ahead and go forward. And these first few are the ones that are critical until I can get my hand back here and start guiding that like I did the last time. Once I can do that, I can go ahead and just guide that through. Notice I'm not getting in any big hurry as I'm stitching this. Making sure nothing gets in a bind. I come up to the end here. Hit reverse. Go backwards about five stitches forward another five stitches pull that up cut it off and then let's check our stitch on the other side so turn that inside out again nice clean stitch any excess contact cement I can just rub off with my finger or my thumb. So, got one side complete now. Down the side on the shoulder. Now we're ready to go to the second piece up here. And we'll repeat the same thing we did on this side. So I'll come back as soon as I have that done. I've got all four seams sewn and you can see where I was talking about you get any of that excess uh, contact cement which by the way that worked absolutely beautiful uh, for keeping that steady and together as I was stitching it it did not affect the sewing machine whatsoever the needle the thread anything so it worked out great and then I mentioned earlier, if you have any excess contact cement, when you're done and it dries, just take your finger, open that, that uh, seam a little bit, take your finger, and I take that part of my finger right there, kind of on the side of the pad of my finger, and I'll just work it back and forth a little bit, and that will peel right off that excess and it will just ball right up and come off of there and then you get a nice clean seam let's see we have some on the other side not as bad but there's some so let's go ahead and do the same thing on this side Let's fold that seam over, open that up a little bit, and I'll just take my finger and clean that out of there. And it just comes right out. So now I've got a nice clean seam that's stitched, and I'll show you that. Cut these excess strings off here. And you see on the inside where it was stitched, I've got a nice, clean, straight stitch. No bubbles, nice and flat. And I think that's, again, I used that guide piece of tape. That's just how I do it. And that contact cement. And that worked great. It kept this from moving at all. So, flip it inside out. Got a nice finished stitched vest. And now, what I want to do 
is I want to move on to putting on the conchos. Now I want my conchos, I'm only going to put four on there. I'm going to put two on this side and two on this side so that they match. Um, and I want to put them on with a blood knot. And I'm going to use some uh, pig skin to do my blood knots with. And just to set it off a little bit, I'm going to use black. So what I need to do is get my conchos out and they are, let me measure them, they are one and a quarter inch conchos, I have a star, I'll make sure I don't get more than one here because they're not super thick. And I want to lay them out and get a visual here of how I want these to look. Now remember, I'm gonna have I'm not gonna have a real long blood knot hanging off of there, but I want them to look symmetrical and nice and neat because remember this this vest the type of vest that I'm making here um, does not button up or tie up or anything it's it's designed to just leave open so these conchos obviously are, are the decoration part uh, from the point of the v-neck uh, looks like three inches down from there to the center of the concho and that's the first one so to the center the second one will go eight inches to the center of the concho which should make them five inches apart then I want to measure over and I'm going to put them one inch from the edge of the vest. So right there's where the measurements are and I've got my uh, concho set. Now, what I want to do is I want to take a sharpie, at least that's what I'm going to use, and all I'm going to do is hold those conchos in place and mark each slot where those need to be punched for the pig skin to make my blood knot. So I've got those marked. So at this point, I can go ahead and move my conchos out of the way, set them aside, I've got all my marks here that I need. I'm going to put my poly cutting board underneath this. And then I'm going to take my slot punch that I'm going to use. And I'm going to cut those slots. Now remember this leather is fairly lightweight so it's not going to take a lot to get through it on those punches and I'll, sh I'll show you that as soon as I get done here and all I'm doing is centering that 
slotted punch up on that mark. And of course I want it as straight as possible so my concho doesn't get twisted as I make my blood knot. So there you can see my slots in there on the top and the bottom that match up with my concha. Now I can move this aside for a second and then I'll get my material that I'm going to make my blood knots out of and I'll be right back. I've got my black pig skin here that I'm going to use um, for my blood knot. So I want to make sure that I get it nice and square. So I'm going to straighten this one edge up with my cutting grid on my cutting board here, my mat, and then I'll square off the top. So I know I've got a good sharp right angle. Then I can go ahead and uh, cut the bottom. And this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, be nine inches long. Now remember, I can go ahead and cut this. A little longer and then when I'm done I can trim those blood knots the ends the tassel part I can cut that at any length that I want so I'm gonna make these three-eighths Of an inch just a hair over that's what my slots are in my conchos and I flipped my cutting edge over so that my cork side was up that gives me a, a tighter smoother fit and then I'll take my first one and just double check make sure what this is gonna look like I don't want it too loose but I don't want it too thick so that fits in there real easy so I'm gonna go ahead and make the rest of them a half inch let's try a half inch before I cut them all and let's see let's see how that works So this one's a half inch wide. And that's much better. Fits a little snugger. Is that a word? Snugger? more snug plenty long enough so I'll need four of those total so I'll just keep moving over a half inch and cut three more of those
So that gives me four total of the same length. And like I said, I can trim them off to whatever I want them to be at the end. So let me set those over here out of the way. Grab the vest. And I do have some leather conchos that are just plain leather. Just in case I need to use those as a backing, I'm going to wait and see. Uh, I'd rather not, but in case I have to, uh, we'll just we'll see how that works. So let's take this piece out that I put in there before as a test fit. Let's bring it up through the vest. Then I can put that through the concho just like I did on the test fit. I think that's going to work really well. I don't think I'm going to have to put a backer on it. So the next thing is, is to go ahead and cut in the blood knot. I'm going to get a little closer so you can check that out and be able to see what I'm doing there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take these down, cut them off even. so that both are even. Then I'm going to cut an angle so that I have a point on them. And I'm going to cut them in opposite directions for no apparent reason other than that's what I'm doing. So, um, and I keep calling this a blood knot. Some people call it a bleed knot. So, uh, terminology uh, gets me sometimes, but uh, uh, I'll try to remember to call it a bleed knot, not a blood knot. So, uh, what I'll do is I've got both of these pulled up fairly tight. I'm going to lift up the top, and I'm going to take a craft knife here with a sharp razor blade in it. And I'm going to make a cut right in the center of that vertically about a half inch. So it's going to be uh, approximately the same, uh, the slit's going to be about the same size as the width of my lace. I can take the bottom piece, it's got that point on it, I can pull that apart a little bit. You got to make sure that you have it at least the length of the width of your lace. So you can get that started. Put that point through there and pull that through. And then snug it down. So there's your first cut. So you're going to snug that down. That's going to hold your concho in place. You're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to take the piece that you just pulled through and do the half inch cut on it. Again, take your time. Be very careful. You don't want to make a mistake on your cut. Cut it too long or cut it at a weird angle. We'll pull that apart. Put the bottom lace back through there just like you did the first time. 
pull it through. And snug it down. Let me see if I can get you in a little closer here. Maybe I'll just pick it up. But you can see now I've got my bleed knot holding on my concho. So my concho is on there real nice and snug. It's not going anywhere. So let's go ahead and let's do a second one here. And we'll do it on the same side. And we'll just go ahead and trim this one before we ever get started. I just cut off about a quarter inch of each end and then put my 45 on there on each end at different angles and then put it up through my slots pull it up till it's even grab another concho Pull it up through until both my pieces are even. And it's snug. Then I can go ahead and cut the slot in the top one. Again, you want to be very careful you don't slip, cut into your vest or something like that. That would be a nightmare at this point. So very, very carefully. Go ahead and put your bottom piece of the bleed knot through the top slot. Snug it down. Now you're going to cut slot in that piece that you just pulled up and put the bottom back through that just like you did the first time pull that through snug it down And there's the second bleed knot finished. Let me back off here just a little bit. Oop, wrong direction. Let me make sure that you can see those. I'll go ahead and finish the other side and then I'll show you the finished product. All right, so I got the other two conchos with the blood or the bleed knots on there. Turned out really good. Let's see if I can get up a little closer. Get you a close up on that knot. So I ended up using four conchos that turned out really good on the inside too. So this leather was thick enough I didn't have to put anything behind it to support it. And again, this style, the, if you look on like a lot of the old westerns, they wore this style of vest. that didn't have any buttons, didn't tie or anything. They just wore it open. It had some conchos on it. And uh, they just wore it over their shirt. So it turned out nice. It was easy to work with on a standard sewing machine so it didn't take any special stitching machine or an expensive leather stitching machine uh, 
it was it's soft leather but yet it has that older worn leather look to it so it turned out great uh, it turned out better than what I expected being my first time so uh, check this out try it if you like it's it's not a difficult project doesn't really take a huge amount of time uh, but I want to thank Kentucky Leather and Hides for their support and go check them out at www.kentuckyleatherandhides.com great people awesome products uh, if you're looking for anything uh, exotic or uh, any type of leather at, or accessories they have it so go check them out uh, and you won't be disappointed so I want to thank them I want to thank you for watching I appreciate it very much and like I always say please like share and subscribe and I'll see you next time Thank you.